Today's advanced surface dressing process has its origins in the tar spray and chip process of the last century. However, that's where the similarities cease. The modern process is significantly more sophisticated, both in execution and materials used. Plus, technical advances have been made in specialist computer-assisted plant. Today's sophisticated road dressing techniques produce a new and high-quality road surface with tightly specified chippings held in a close mosaic. This brings with it a number of benefits for the engineer and the road user. It waterproofs the surface and protects the foundation of the road. It stops any deterioration that might be taking place. It gives a textured and skid-resistant surface that plays an important role in cutting accident rates, especially in wet weather conditions and on high-speed roads. It's quick, minimising the interference with traffic flow, and from a cosmetic angle, it can give a uniform appearance to a patched surface or even a distinctive colour to a road. Constant progress means that surface dressings have now been developed for a wide spectrum of demanding circumstances. But meeting the specification precisely needs a high level of both expertise and experience. It's vital that every aspect of the complex process should be totally integrated. But meeting the specification precisely needs a high level of both expertise and experience. The role of the contractor is crucial here because the very best of them offer a total service package from initial assessment to aftercare. Contractors of this calibre are all members of the Road Surface Dressing Association, which has now merged with the Slurry Surfacing Contractors Association and the High Friction Surfacing Association to form the Road Surface Treatments Association. The RSDA was formed in 1942 with the express intention of bringing together all the parties involved and, through mutual cooperation, improving the standards of the industry. Constant, continuing endeavours for more than half a century has achieved just that. The RSDA, now the RSTA, has a major influence on British and European standards, on training, on quality, on research and development and on codes of practice. All RSTA members are committed to quality and are accredited to Sector Scheme 13. If surface dressing is regarded as preventative maintenance and carried out by a quality assured contractor as minor surface faults appear, then it can be highly cost effective. But if it is left until there is considerable deterioration, then the cost of preliminary patching can be as much as, or even more than, the process itself. Surface dressing done at the right time, as shown in Road Note 39 on tables 7, 3, 2 and 3, 3, and done in the right way, can increase the life of the road well beyond its design life. And it can be used on the whole spectrum of road types from single-track country roads with only occasional traffic to the country's busiest roads. Whatever the type of road, the dressing must be carefully designed to get the best performance out of the range of methods and materials that are now available. The way this is done is by working to the aforementioned Road Note 39 published by the Transport Research Laboratory. Its basic principle is to first choose the type of dressing, then to select the binder and specify the chipping size. As you can see, there is a chain of logical steps which will lead you to design a surface dressing to meet specific demands, whatever they may be. To demonstrate the whole process, let's look at a specific stretch of road. So, referring to figure 8-1, the first stage is to decide whether or not to surface dress. The road here is in good shape structurally, but the surface is showing signs of deterioration. Hairline cracks have begun to appear and in certain areas the binder has oxidised, leaving the surface porous. Definitely a candidate for surface dressing. And if it's done now, it will avoid the need for patching, resurfacing or even reconstruction. So, once the go-ahead has been given, the exact usage and condition of the road have to be determined. The first parameter is traffic volume. Medium and heavy vehicles cause more embedment of chippings than other vehicles so they're a critical factor. Traffic volumes are analysed in terms of vehicles over 1.5 metric tonnes unladen per lane per day and total traffic. Speed is also important. The slower vehicles are going, the longer they are loading the surface. Once you've got your data on commercial vehicles, go to Road Note 39, 
Table 7, 2, 3, and determine the traffic category. In this particular case, we've got 550 commercial vehicles per lane with free-flowing traffic giving us traffic category D. In the absence of recent traffic flow data, then the new Roads and Street Works Act road type could be used. The more the traffic, the greater the polishing, and this causes loss of skid resistance. So consider information on accidents in which skidding was a major factor. Then consider road geometry and road layout, bends, crossings, junctions and so on. The surface will need sufficient texture for good skid resistance at high speeds in wet conditions and the requirements could be different for each lane. The need for skid resistance is the main factor in determining the PSV or polished stone value of the chippings. Now to road hardness. It's important to know the road hardness of the existing surface because it's going to be the foundation for the new surface dressing. The harder it is, the less the chippings will be embedded. The softer it is, the greater the embedment. Hardness is measured by pushing a steel probe into the road surface with a fixed force for a fixed time. The reading is given as millimetres of penetration. Ten tests should be done in the wheel tracks around half a metre apart and an average taken. Similar tests should be done at intervals where conditions change. The road temperature has to be taken at the same time. The whole test is only valid between 15 degrees and 35 degrees centigrade. There are five grades. Very hard, hard, normal, soft and very soft. To determine the hardness category, Turn to Road Note 39, Figure 7, 2, 1. There are four alternatives based on different combinations of latitude and altitude. Our site is in the south at an altitude of less than 200 metres, so we'll use Category A of Figure 7, 2, 2. In our particular case, we've got penetration of 7 millimetres at 29 degrees. This puts us in the normal hardness grade. Now we know the traffic volumes the new surface has to cater for and the hardness of the road it is to be applied to. The next question is, what type of dressing are we going to use? There are five basic types, each one developed for a specific purpose. The single surface dressing. One application of a binder one layer of chippings, the most commonly used. It's suitable for most situations, but there are limits to the stresses it can withstand. The racked-in surface dressing, developed for locations where traffic is heavier and faster. This is how it works. Binder is applied to the existing surface and a layer of chippings is spread at about 90% of the rate of a single dressing. Then another layer of smaller chippings is laid. These smaller chippings lock in with the larger ones to give a stable mosaic. The double surface dressing for existing road surfaces that are lean or as an alternative to a racked in dressing. Essentially, it's two surface dressing operations with the larger chippings applied first. Because the first application of binder may have soaked into the lean surface, the second acts as a grout. The inverted double surface dressing this is only used where there's an uneven surface, a variable surface such as a heavily patched road, or where you are dressing a minor concrete road that has not been dressed before. The pad coat with small size chippings goes on first to even up the surface. Then it's followed by a normal single surface dressing as before. And finally, the sandwich dressing specified for areas where the existing surface is binder rich something which often occurs in the wheel tracks and unlike all other dressings, the chippings are spread first. In this case, the larger chippings first, then the binder, then the smaller chippings. Five types, five different uses. To decide which one, go to Road Note 39, Figure 83A and Figure 83B. You'll notice here that there are other factors to be taken into consideration like radius of curvature, existing surface conditions and gradient, all of which will influence the final selection. Using our data of 550 commercial vehicles per day, 
traffic category D and normal road hardness, we go down through the various options to get the recommendation racked in or double surface dressing with intermediate binder or single surface dressing with premium binder. We'll use a racked in dressing in this case as the preferred option. These flowcharts not only show the type of dressing but also indicate whether or not a modified binder is needed. Today, only emulsion binders are available in the United Kingdom. Emulsion binders are made up of about 70% bitumen mixed with 30% water. They can be used all through the season. The road surface dressing season usually runs from April to September, dependent upon local conditions, and the binder viscosity must take into account the ambient and road surface temperatures. Select the binder for the job it has got to do and, if it's relevant, the time of year it has got to do it. The guidance in section 5.3 can help you decide on what choice to make backed up by the notes to the tables in section 9. In this particular case, we'll go for an intermediate grade emulsion binder. We've got the type of dressing and the binder. Now we need to establish the size and type of chippings. Cleanliness of chippings is important, which is why washing takes place. The binder and type of chippings are going to be determined by the amount of traffic, the hardness of the present surface and the skidding resistance required. Traffic embeds chippings continuously, so the heavier the traffic, the larger the chippings needed. Whereas the harder the surface, the smaller the chippings because there will be less embedment. The use of smaller size chippings and racked in and double surface dressings considerably reduces road traffic noise and is an important factor in the choice of dressing type. And don't forget, each lane may need a different chipping size. To get the correct size, we go back again to Road Note 39, Section 9. We have selected a racked in dressing and guidance on the chipping sizes for racked in dressings is given in Table 922. Intermediate grade binder, traffic category D and normal road hardness gives us either a 14mm with 6mm chippings or 10mm with 6 or 4mm chippings. We'll go for a 10mm with 6mm racked in chipping surface dressing to minimise noise from the road surface. The one factor we have not yet defined is the binder spread rate. This determines the thickness of the binder and must take into account the size of the chippings. The rate of spread of the binder is predominantly determined by the road hardness and the category with additional aggregate type and local site factors being taken into account in secondary adjustment steps. In our example, we are using intermediate grade bitumen emulsion to bind 10mm chippings with 6mm chippings in a racked in dressing on a category D road of normal hardness. Guidance on the rate of spread of binder is also given in section 9 of the road note consolidated into the same tables as guidance on the nominal size of chippings. Accordingly, we refer back to table 922 and are given the spread rate of 1.8 litres per square metre. This primary spread rate is adjusted by the secondary factors listed in tables 926A and 926B. We are using a racked in dressing so table 926B applies. Our chips are design size, crushed rock chippings with a flakiness index of between 10 and 25% and therefore require no adjustment factor. The other secondary factors affecting the site are early season, effect zero, shade, partially shaded, effect plus 0.1. Surface condition, porous, effect plus 0.1. Gradient, less than 5%, effect 0. Speed, low speed, less than 50 miles per hour, effect 0. Local traffic, within design range, effect 0. This makes the total adjustment for secondary factors plus 0.2 litres per square metre, giving an adjusted spray rate of 2 litres per square metre. As far as is practical, the adjusted spray rate should be changed where the secondary factors vary through the site. This completes the design process.
We've now got recommendations for the design of the surface dressing of this road. A racked-in dressing with 10 and 6 mm chippings and an intermediate grade emulsion binder applied at 2 litres per square metre, but varied as far as is practical where the secondary factors vary. But before work can start, traffic must be warned and directed. All signing must comply with the principles set out in Chapter 8 of the Traffic Signs Manual and the RSDA and County Surveyors Society Joint Code of Practice for signing at surface dressing sites. Early and repeated warnings of the works must be given. Traffic approaching from side roads must also be warned. Traffic must be reduced to less than 10 miles per hour as it passes machines and operatives and flow must be controlled by manually operated stop and go signs with radio linkage. When the surface dressing crew reaches the site, all the pre-planning will have been done and all the preparatory work carried out. The spray tanker containing binder at the correct temperature starts the spray at the specified rate of spread. Chipping spreaders. There are two types. Self-propelled forward-moving spreaders and tailboard gritters. For best results, the chipping spreaders should match the width of the spray bar. Chipping should be applied immediately. The dressing is then rolled to press the chippings into the binder film. The formation of a close mosaic can also be helped by allowing traffic on the surface but controlled at speeds of less than 20 miles per hour. Speeds must be kept down until the dressing has completely settled. A thorough sweeping must then be given before the surface can be opened to the traffic at normal speeds. If this design and application procedure is followed stage by stage, then the resulting road surface will provide reliability and excellent value for money. Initial costs should not be the determining factor. The cheapest dressing may give the road the required texture and skid resistance, but only for a limited time, accelerating the need for further treatment. Alternatively, an end performance specification may be used. It lays down the required skid resistance, texture and minimum life of the finished dressing. This is approach adopted by the European Standard for Surface Dressing BS EN 12271 and the National Guidance Document PD 6689 and it means the RSTA contractors can then use their knowledge and experience to provide road surfaces that are even more cost effective. A system of combined spraying and chippings application from a single unit have been developed by RMS and others to facilitate surface dressing in relatively confined areas like housing estate, roads and pavements. The rapid speed of combined application this development results in provides many safety benefits such as no open sections of newly sprayed bitumen for children or pets to walk through. This specialist plant allows spread rates to be as carefully controlled on smaller areas as on the open highway and a new section of the road note is devoted to the design of dressings for footpaths and lightly trafficked pavements. Road surface dressing is developing all the time and research is producing ever more sophisticated materials and technology. The control of these materials and consistency of laying is becoming increasingly important and advanced testing procedures are available to ensure and improve this consistency. Such developments are set to continue because the task of designing and constructing a quality surface, whether it be for a minor road or a busy motorway, deserves special attention. The Road Surface Treatments Association, making Britain's roads better and safer.